Okay, we're back again. We're going to talk about the internet today. Uh, I wasn't going to do this, but um, I am now. I've decided uh, I'm going to add this. So this will also be on your test number five. So if you open up the internet PowerPoint, you can uh, follow along with me. Uh, you know, the internet used to be called the World Wide Web and uh, called the internet and then the net and then so what is it actually it's uh, a network of interconnected computers that is now global it did not start out globally um, it was born in 1969 and was called the ARPANET uh, A-R-P-A-N-E-T and it was a connection of computers uh, at UCLA, Stanford, UCSB, that's the University of California, Santa Barbara, and University of Utah. So we have three universities in California and one in Utah, and they connected. And so that was the ARPANET. Um, so what was the state of computers in the late 1960s and the early 1970s? Uh, I will tell you this personal story. Um, I won't tell you what year, how's that? But when I was uh, in my first year of high school, which was actually, I went to a special school in Urbana, Illinois, um, right on the campus of the University of Illinois. Um, and we had, we were lucky. We, we had seventh and eighth grade together. So right out of sixth grade, we went into high school. And that sub-freshman year, when I was 12 years old, um, we were taken to the computer named Plato on the campus of the University of Illinois. And Plato took up an entire city block. That was the computer. Uh, and we learned how, I learned how to write Russian on the computer uh, this was, uh, I was taking Russian at the time, and it was just unbelievable. What We were just in awe of this machine and what it could do. And I remember that people at the university would go on, my, my sister was at the university, and she'd go on a date or she would go to a dance put on by a fraternity, and the fraternity would select matches to go on a date with each other on a computer. You would fill out a card, and it was a punch card. And then they would put it through the computer, and somehow your date would be matched to you. I don't know how they did it, but it was very cool. Um, so computers in the late 60s and 70s, if you can imagine from this photo, uh, this is just one very small part of an entire uh, mainframe. So we had no personal computers. That didn't start until the, well, I want to say 80s. It wasn't um, commercially available. But uh, they were all large mainframe computers in the late 60s. And then in the mid-70s, uh, they started with personal computers. Now, these were not available to the average person on the street. Uh, Altair was a box with blinking lights. Uh, in the late 1970s, we had the Apple II and the first usable PC, PC standing for personal computer. Uh, and it was just a very, it was a, an extremely foreign concept that somehow we would take what was in that building and we'd put it on our desktop and we would be able to use that ourselves. It, just think about, you know, I told you that, that things get smaller uh, as they become advanced. Well, we were going to take uh, a building that took up an entire square block and we were going to put that on our desktop. Well, it was just hard to conceive of that. So uh, it started out as a box with blinking lights, um, 
and it was not where the networking or the internet uh, were being developed. It was uh, it was developing on its own as a not as something like the internet. They were growing up separately. Um, so then in the 1970s, 1972, Telnet developed as a way to connect to a remote computer. And in 1972, it's a long time ago, folks, that was uh, 50 years ago, email was introduced. Uh, in 1977, the University of Wisconsin has the first large email system, 100 users. Just imagine that. You weren't able to do that at all, and now you could, on your own computer, contact people that were not near you in a different state or whatever. 1973, ARPANET goes international, and in 1973, we have the File Transfer Protocol, FTP, was established. Uh, I remember when I was learning how to uh, build websites. Um, I'm trying to remember if that was about 20, 25 years ago. Um, and we used FTP to take our written script and load it onto the computer, and it came out to be a page on the Internet. It became a, a web page. I learned... I did not learn how to create websites from software. I wrote it, wrote the code myself, and I'm glad I learned it that way because now I can go into a website and figure out what's wrong, where the code is wrong, and that sort of thing. So, um, so then uh, we move on from there. So what was the state of computers in the early 1980s? Uh, we're getting closer. <clears throat> Uh, in 1981, IBM had a personal computer. 1984, we have the Apple Macintosh, which was introduced uh, by a very interesting commercial that was run and seen once, only once. Um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna look for it on YouTube and show it to you if I can, or send you the link. Uh, quite astounding. Um, and then in 1986, the modem becomes an option on PCs, which is getting it ready to be able to handle the Internet. That's 1986. Um, we're on slide nine now. 1984, the domain name server was introduced, allows the naming of hosts. Uh, it was no longer numeric. Uh, that was your, now you had an IP address, you still have an IP address, but now we can uh, go to um, www.troy.edu. That was something quite new. And the, and the only suffix, suffixes you could use were .com, .net, and .edu, oh, .gov. But only government officials could get .gov. And actually... Uh, .org was only for actual associations or organizations. They had to prove that. Uh, and .net was for networks. So basically, you could get .com. Uh, and in 1986, we get NSFnet. It was created uh, in 1990. It becomes the backbone of the modern Internet when ARPANET is decomposed decommission, which was actually a government program. And it was completely privatized by 1995, and we had a 56K inter uh, interconnection initially, and it increased rapidly. Uh, we people, we citizens, had the ability to access the Internet in 1996. Well, there were some people who were on as early as 1993, <clears throat> they were on through a variety of uh, capabilities um, at certain universities, but it was not commercially available in 1996, and boy, did everybody sign up for it. All right, we're going to stop right here.